Baruch here with Gen Connect, joined today by Mary Mazio. Mary, we spoke yesterday to Lori Tish, who gave us an incredible recap of your incredible film, Thank Underwater you. Dreams. Tell us a little bit. Can of... I quote that? Incredible. Uh, <laughs> we'll talk after. Okay. Call my agent. <laughs> the, the you know we spoke about the the boys who are depicted in this film. What really was the legacy that they left? So it's really incredible that these boys you know, with Home Depot parts, defeated MIT in this underwater robotics competition. But I think what's even more remarkable is the legacy that they left in their little community. When they came back, this was a community largely of extraordinary poverty, undocumented, uh, you know, really a lot of undocumented students, and you didn't hear the word college. Uh, there were four boys on this little robotics team in uh, 2004. You go back now, there are close to 50 kids, and they're talking about college. Wow. That is. So they went back and they inspired their own community that even though they were undocumented, even though they were poor, even though life was excruciatingly hard, something could be different. Incredible. The second thing they did from a legacy standpoint is many of these kids went off to engineering school, which is really exciting. They really uh, inspired a whole new generation of, of engineers. Many of these kids went to ASU, got engineering degrees, and then when they came out, they discovered they couldn't get a driver's license, they couldn't work. What are they going to do? And we really bumped into this in the making of the film. I did not expect to get into this at all, but several of these students from Carl Hayden, this little robotics team in Phoenix, Arizona, started the Arizona Dream Act Coalition. And I said to them, I said, you're engineers. Like, this is social activism. And they said, Mary, we've been trained as engineers. That means solving problems, right? How do we go about solving problems? We may not know where to begin, but we're gonna try. And I was blown away that this act, this simple moment, really this magical moment in 2004, not just energized a whole new generation of engineers, but really excited, I'm gonna have a voice and I'm going to try and make change in my own community. And really these kids are the next generation of civil rights leaders. It's really exciting. Now I know that beyond inspiring you know, the young people, this film is actually gonna generate quite a bit of debate on the issue of immigration. <laughs> But there has been really bipartisan support. How did that how it happen? You know what? It's, it's wild. We started um, having some... So we open in July in theaters. Um, but we started having screenings with uh, the Center for American Progress, a very, very well-respected left-leaning think tank, teamed up with Forward.us, which is Mark Zuckerberg's advocacy organization, and the National Immigration Forum. So on the right, uh, the U.S. Chamber has been hosting screenings, and they're going to open their West, West Coast office with the film, which is amazing. We got a call from Libre, which is funded by the Koch brothers, and Libre said, we need to be hosting screenings. And the fact that we can get people from the left and the right to dialogue, I mean, it's not easy. You know, so in putting together some of these screenings, uh, comments were like, oh, well, those people are hammering the White House on health care. Or, oh, we've never done something with, with those people. And yet they said, well, wait a minute, we're aligned on the issue of creating opportunity in America. We need a whole new generation of innovators and entrepreneurs and engineers. And we need to make that happen. And this Here's transcends the question of whether one supports documentation it, it, or not. It really does. I think it's around the business imperative of, of immigration reform. And what does that mean? That means we have, A, we have an aging population. We have an exploding Hispanic population that 20 years from now, those students are going to be supporting us in our economy. The, the consequences are dire if we don't educate those children, right? Um, secondarily, there are so many unfulfilled jobs in science, engineering, and technology. Here you have kids that are engineers that can, that can compete with the likes of MIT, and you're going to ask them to, to you know, mow lawns? I mean, really, right? So at the end of the day, I think there's a real business imperative. American companies are in desperate need of skilled workers around science and technology, and here they are, right? Give them a chance. Thank you for being with us, Mary. <laughs> and for more with Mary and to learn more about Underwater Dreams, be sure to check out Gen Connect.